Hallelujah. But it's an honor to be anointed. It truly is. You are a blessing when you are truly anointed. Because then you can communicate dimensions of God to people. Just like you are about to receive this morning. Hallelujah. The Lord, while I left here, Pastor, just went um, to the lodge. The Spirit of the Lord spoke to me in a very strange way. He said that I want to do a miracle in the minds of God's people this morning. And the Lord said that I should teach you on God's end time wealth agenda. This is very strange. That's why I said I'm even surprised because um, ordinarily we would come and talk about the Holy Spirit and other things, but the Lord put it in my spirit and I said, Lord, don't, don't embarrass me again. But this morning, I'm going to be teaching you. We'll pray for the sick and everything, but the Lord is going to open our eyes. Remember I told you yesterday how the vision that I had, that I saw written on my pillow, the lifter of men. I truly believe that one of the miracles that will happen this morning is that there will come an anointing from this altar upon people that God will visit your finances in a way that even you you will not believe you're my God and your name is Yahweh your name is Yahweh Yahweh He's my God and His name is Yahweh. Your name is Yahweh. Yahweh. You're my God and Your name is Yahweh. Your name is Yahweh. Yahweh. One more time. You're our God and your name is Yahweh. Your name is Yahweh. Yahweh. Hallelujah. I want us, while we are sitting, to just take two minutes to pray in the spirit. What I'm teaching you is warfare. It's not just an information. I will be opening your eyes to something this morning that I truly believe will be transgenerational. Can we pray in the spirit and say, Lord, like pastor prayed, the eyes of my understanding be enlightened. Please go ahead and pray. God's end time wealth agenda. Abrande gedo salia kata branda gada balakusiada. Stabaraka to sede briada balada bos. Sede bereka to shalabariana balada bos. Zekete pratu kati aladaba. Lord, here at House of David this morning, let there be enlightenment. Let there be a miracle upon our spirits, upon our minds. In the name of Jesus, for the sake of our children and our children's children, let there be a shift, a shift in the spirit, a shift in the spirit. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. God bless you. Please, if you can write or you can at least put some information, it will be profitable that we listen. If you resent what I'm teaching you, it's a sign that you are under attack. If just by mentioning what I mentioned and there is a resentment, don't feel embarrassed. It's a sign that you are already under attack. Are we together? In 2007, I had a vision. Let me start my teaching this way. In 2007, Pastor, until then, I began to press into the things of God and I had had encounters with Jesus and very great encounters the lord had begun to show me the visions of the revival that was coming and a lot of other things that he revealed to me and he had shown me the necessity of the holy spirit the necessity of the anointing he made me respect the anointing he made me respect light and revelation but something happened 
I was in that vision. And then I went somewhere and Bishop Oyedeko was sitting down. And while he was sitting down, I came with a seed to honor him, Pastor. And then when I came, I dropped the seed and he looked at me. He said, that's not everything. I should check my pocket. I checked my pocket and then I found out that there was still some money. I dropped it and then I think he prayed for me or something. And all of a sudden, a personality I do not know, he came and held my hands. He said, come. And they opened a room for me. And when they opened that room, I saw all kinds of currencies, all kinds, naira, dollars, pounds. And in my mind, I said, what is this? What is going on here? And then the person told me to pick some. The funny thing is that I was not attached to it at all. You imagine that you will first roll on that place first and then sit down and choose what to carry. You know, and I stood there. I was surprised. I picked a little of the major currencies, including Naira, and then I was going to step out. And then I just woke up. When I woke up, I had the audible voice of God, not a vision, not the spirit speaking to my spirit. Many people lie that they hear the audible voice of God. God doesn't speak audibly all the time. In a whole lifetime, you may hear him just three times. But in that case, I had the audible voice of God, just four words massive kingdom wealth transfer forwards forwards i said what is the meaning of this now massive kingdom wealth transfer not you will be rich not you will be this and that you know every time god speaks there is light that comes from his word it comes to your spirit first so your mind is unfruitful it will take a while staying in his presence to begin to break down the implication of that mystery like the word of God wrote on a wall, Mene, Mene, Tekel, Ufesin. And Mene alone meant, O king, you have been weighed in a balance and you have been found wanting. One spiritual word. So when the light from God comes, you will think you understand. And then his spirit will begin to open you. Pastor, it made me to begin to study the subject of wealth and prosperity from a kingdom perspective. And that was when I knew that the church was under attack under a serious attack please no matter what it is that you know or don't know i just want you to you can insult me later on but let's pay attention and hear god deliver us now the first attack on the church is a shield a resentment for this truth i told you that if you if that attack the same way you look at someone and know that you have symptoms of a sickness the moment there is resentment within you you are under attack number two the moment there is such an appetite that you are more concerned about the teaching now than god you are still under attack too are you seeing that now yes an obsession for this teaching not because you like what i'm saying is because it resonates with the loss that is already hidden in your heart is still an attack is god blessing us this morning the greatest end time weapon of Satan will not be immorality. Listen carefully. The greatest weapon of Satan will not even be terrorism. The greatest end time weapon, a real weapon of mass destruction, will be to create a cloud to manipulate the economy of nations. Remember, even the beast when he shows up, He's not interested in women. He's not interested in men. He's interested in sitting in the economic helm of affair because whoever controls economy controls the civilization of a people. Are we together now? Until now, our idea has just been car and house and I'm okay, I have 100,000. But God is telling you there is a conspiracy against the church. Are we together now? Influence and glory are related to wealth you cannot talk about influence there are certain dimensions of the corridors of power you cannot get there until you are empowered enough are we together now the bible tells us in the book of ecclesiastes a very strange parable that there was in a city a poor wise man and the bible said that that man through his wisdom gave a counsel that overran the enemy but the bible says yet 
that poor man he didn't talk of wisdom again wisdom had finished his usefulness now prosperity to continue was not there and he said that poor man's wisdom was despised and the teacher was looking and he said i have seen this wisdom is good but a poor man's wisdom and if that man is the church the poor church's wisdom will also be despised are we together the greatest attack on the disciples of jesus came in the areas of finance they didn't catch judas one day with one woman like Bathsheba, you know and all of that and jesus ah, what are you doing judas didn't have time for that but money when he saw the ministry blossoming he said i can make money out of jesus he was not a bad man he was just somebody who wanted to cash in fast he was hoping that when he sells jesus he will now leave his power with the foolish people and let him rubbish them as a lesson and then he was surprised that jesus gave himself that's why he didn't even use the money again are we together now hmm. the wealth transfer agenda is real the greatest battle in my opinion that the church will fight is the battle over poverty the battle over lack and the battle over their effect to kingdom advance now listen to me the subject of poverty and lack will be useless if it had no effect to kingdom advance are we together now remember that we are kingdom people and everything we look at is with respect to the kingdom whatever can interrupt god's agenda is worth your attention are we together now jesus was hanging on that cross as the word pastor every man of god and prophet could no longer help their ministry finish until a wealthy man called joseph of arimathea went to herod and used his influence he also had the tomb the prophet prophesied that jesus must be kept in a virgin tomb but a poor man cannot buy a tomb so a wealthy man kept i want to show you how wealth played every prophet stopped in the temple it took well to continue to resurrection the Bible says that Joseph of Arimathea went and met Herod and said, look, he demanded the body, influence through wealth, not prayer, wealth. And then the Bible says he gave the body of Jesus and an opportunity was given for resurrection to happen. It was a virgin tomb. Are we together? Yes. Now, you see, when you study church history, are you blessed already this morning? When you study church history, you will get to a point where the church was in a strange season of persecution under emperors like Nero. Are we together now? Where believers would be born again and the lifespan of their stay afterwards may not be up to seven days. So, I mean, years and years of persecution like that eroded believers from focusing on other aspects of the kingdom. It was just martyrdom and their faith in Christ. Are we together now? Because if you were born again, immediately you would be an object of persecution. They used human beings to light an amphitheater where he would see and then lions would eat up people. Now, under Emperor Constantine, according to Bible history, you would find out that a battle was fought and the advantage that his dream gave a cross was put on all the instruments the weapons of war and it brought victory based on that he stopped the persecution of the church now believers who had been born into a system of martyrdom now they had been relieved of that they didn't know what else to do with their lives are we together because they had come from a background where if you were born again you knew that you were going to die only in a matter of days so their focus was your salvation and everything and the fact that look family don't miss me i'm going to heaven you're coming to join me now an emperor says look i let you go practice your faith unhindered and those believers didn't know what else to do with their lives because now they had 30 more years to live 40 more years to live then a few of them said look why do we, we sit down here and die our children are dying and then a few now went to begin to interact with the world in business and then they were persecuted they were persecuted by the fold they said no 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 our parents did not teach us to interact with the world are we together now the hangover of that imbalance is where this error of resenting this weapon this weapon given 
When they ask you what are the tools for kingdom advancement, don't mention anointing alone. Anointing, prosperity, influence, you must mention them and give them equal value. Is God opening our eyes this morning? Satan has brought more harm through poverty and lack of financial resources than he has done through direct demonic assaults. There are people here who are not sick. There are people here who are really not oppressed. But the, the financial inability in your life is the reason why many people have stress. Pastor, did you know that young adults now in early 20s have high blood pressure? It used to be something that you, you have to be well past 50. And then at least they say, okay, mama, you need to rest. But now a young guy, father dead, mother dead. He's the firstborn of five children. He's 20 years. And he has to pay the school fees of everyone. You see people talking to themselves. He, he's just going to pass a bridge and he's talking to himself. Where should I go? And you're saying, are you okay? Say, Why should I be okay? You know, look at what is happening to us. There is it's a mind control system. There are many ladies who have missed the will of God for their lives because the financial pressures in their families compel their parents to direct them to someone who may have resources but is not ordained by God. Are we together? You know, many people say the ladies in our church are following men. Is it poor men that, that is it the poor men that, that will carry them to hotels? Please talk to me. When you don't have money, do, do you have the luxury of imagining a vain thing? <laughs> Are we together? There is a real problem that we have to address this morning. Pastor, you see a church will buy a land and government will just come and collect the land. Just like that. No money, no influence. Everyone in the church is broke. They are prayer warriors. They love God. They see in the vision that the land has been returned, but it never manifests. Because there's no one with influence to speak. I will never pastor a people who don't have influence. Now, you don't have to choose spirituality and influence. Both can come. Are we together now? Yes. Listen carefully. It's a terrible thing. The average young man in Nigeria now is just hoping to find any channel to hustle. Someone graduates and after 15 years, no job, you can't even rent a house. Pastor, find out how many young people at their age in their 30s, 40s, still in their parents' homes. They fast in that house. They lock the door for three days, dry in that house. But the wherewithal to be established it's a system. When Jacob said, Laban, I've served you. Let me go. Laban said, no. I have to keep you here. He said, let me establish my own family. It's an antichrist system that will never let people go and serve the Lord. How many men of God stand to pray and in five minutes they've forgotten that they are praying? Ah, this rent, this speaker now, this one just blew, and the other one just blew. The person went to pray. The prayer requests are in the hand there. Lord, change lives, transform destinies. Lack of finances is such a demonic distraction. You have to be a leader to understand. Are we together? Pastor, I counseled a couple in 2000, and um, I can't remember now. This was where, this was the, the, the last stroke that got to me. And I said, no, something must happen in the church. A true story now. I know that I'm on air and I'm saying this. Pastor, a woman who had been serving her director in Nigeria here, they got to such a constraint. When you hear that people did some things that are ungodly, don't be too quick to judge. Oh. Find out the situations that surrounded that thing. Because poverty can make men become beasts. Are we together? And then all of a sudden, the woman needed some help desperately. I don't know what it was, but it was quite a critical issue. And she ran to her director and said, Sir, please, I need you to help me. Can you just give me my salary in advance? I will work, I will do this, but there is this is a life and death situation. And the man laughed. He said, you are... You are a married woman and you are talking like a small girl. You, you understand what he was referring to. Why are you begging me? 
when you know what to do go and discuss it and you know prosperity gives you audacity you can speak nonsense and not have respect for the fact that the woman is married did you know true story the under pressure the woman went and met her husband and said this is what my director is saying you know i've been faithful to you but let me just do this thing and let's resolve this don't be too quick to say god forbid just say god mercy instead of god forbid <laughs> The man first refused, but when the pressure, you see how Satan makes people deviate from God. He will increase the pressure. And then they agreed, husband and wife, that the wife will go and have an affair with the boss. And then what happened, happened. And then the man gave some money, the guilt, the torture and everything. The woman had to leave the job, but that was resolved. When, when this woman was sharing this with me, tears filled my eyes. I said, what is this? and god is in heaven and we lie that since i was young now i am old i've not seen the righteous forsaken who is begging for bread there is it the boss come on now a woman with children compromise on her integrity overnight satan did not use a knife he used poverty pray in one minute and say, Lord, for the sake of my children and my children's children, I must come out of this demonic disaster. Pray in one minute, please. It is not your will. 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 Hallelujah. Listen to me before I begin to share with you a few things. Wealth and abundance will bring speed of accomplishment and manifest your destiny fast. When, when wealth and abundance is available, it can bring speed of accomplishment. There are many prayer points that are unnecessary. Many, many. 30 minutes of noise that can be solved with one door, one open door. Is God speaking to us this morning? Anybody that tells you prosperity will not make you happy. Um, I don't know what to say to you, but let me tell you. Prosperity and wealth and abundance in itself cannot give you joy. But my goodness, it can create the atmosphere for your joy. An atmosphere is what is important in this kingdom. Atmosphere. An atmosphere of rest. Your children are well taught of the Lord. You come to your kitchen and there is food to eat. Relatives are quarreling that can scatter your marriage and just a little tip can solve the problem. You say it doesn't create the atmosphere? Some of your necessary fight in marriages, they, they, come as, they come as quarrel between father-in-law and mother-in-law, but it's a lie. The underlying issue is money. Top three reasons why marriages break in the world, including Nigeria, Christian marriages. Number one, money. Number two, intimacy issues. Number three, in-laws and third-party issues. Number one is what? A man marries another individual but money comes between them is demonic very demonic there are many people who have written books or have ideas that should go around the world they will tell you they had encounters and god said document this book the book is documented the wherewithal to take it to the nations to bless people it's not there there are many people in the grave today who should not have died it was never the will of God for them to die. 50,000 would have kept them alive and strong. Did you know? Well, it doesn't happen so much in Lagos here, I presume. But when you go down the north sometimes, you see somebody who is playing football. You look at him, you know that this person is already sick. Just try to, that person with typhoid is running up and down. He doesn't even know he's supposed to go to the hospital. Because there's no possibility for any money on anything. You eat breakfast, you wait for another day. What sort of a life is that? Are we together? Yes. How many people are supposed to get married? They've been going now for 15 years. The brother wants to marry and then the devil makes sure. That, 
that the job that will help him because he knows that the seed that will come out from them the seed that will come out will contribute to kingdom advance and all of a sudden that brother has nothing and he sits down depressed and the lady says i'm tired of waiting for you and she has to leave and the brother is there quarreling then he comes to church and then we say it doesn't matter don't worry one day god will help you and that brother says, i don't understand what you are saying are we together i happen to be the first son in my family and for many of you here who are elder ones you understand the burden of responsibility some of you you whether you are first or not the fact that you are the one that god lifted alone in in africa in africa nobody cares for their children alone no matter how selfish you are the system was so designed that something must leave you to your environment nobody has just biological children and that is not a very good news because that's that's not giving giving is an act of the will but there is a system that will have to force you is god speaking to us this morning it takes wealth to save souls the gospel is free but the means to take it to the lost is not free it's not free it's not free bibles are not produced free tracts are not produced free this church is running probably on a generator right now you're listening there are media gadgets airing around the world and different things are happening it's not free it takes wealth to equip the saints are we together now it takes wealth to help the needy that are so full around in our society it takes wealth to build a civilized society where you can go to bed and sleep with your eyes closed and not hope do you know something happened pastor when i moved to my house where i stay now very interesting because of the the kind of uh, the the kind of security lights that I put. I was surprised. I went there uh, before I would move in, maybe a week afterwards to look at everything, make sure the work was done. And I went there and to my greatest surprise, someone removed, not the whole, just removed. And you know the person didn't steal it. There was a statement, sir, I'm hungry. You know when they steal, you force the thing and run. This one, he removed it carefully, and left everything just removed two of them in front i said so is it a crime to at least put something that can beautify your house i'm sure the person will be angry we are suffering in nigeria and you are using this kind of light you, you see what is if we don't do anything about this message your children and your children's children are in trouble Is God helping us this morning? Let's look at a few scriptures. Please help me, media. Number one, Psalm 112 and verse 1 to 3. God is doing a miracle in our minds already. Praise ye the Lord. Blessed is the man that feareth the Lord, that delighted greatly in his commands. Please read with me verse 2. His seed shall be mighty upon earth. Uh-huh. The generation of the upright shall be blessed. Verse 3 if you are a Christian. Two interesting words. One is that riches shall be in his house. Number two, he will still remain righteous. That wealth and riches can be in a man's house while his righteousness endures. Whoever taught us that wealth and compromise must go hand in hand. That wealth and riches shall be in his house. Prophesy to yourself and say, that's me. That's wealth and riches. Number two, Job chapter 36 and verse 11. Please write these scriptures. Am I boring you this morning, house of David? Job 36 and verse 11. One to read is projected. If they obey and serve him, help me. They shall spend their days in prosperity and their years it didn't say they shall spend their months in prosperity they shall spend their days 
if they obey and they serve me, they will spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasure. Scripture number 3, Psalm 35 verse 27. Psalm 35 verse 27. Psalm 35 verse 27. Ready? Read please. Let them shout for joy and be glad. Who? That favor my righteous cause. Stop. Stop. So he's talking about those who favor his righteous cause. Are we together? He says, let them shout for joy and be glad that favor my righteous cause. All right, let's continue. Yea, let them say continually, let the Lord be magnified, which hath pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. God not only wants to bless his church, but the Bible says it gives him pleasure. Hearing is our father glorified that we bear much fruit. But let me show you a tragedy. Proverbs chapter 22, please, and verse 2. Very fearful scripture. One, two, read, please. The rich and the poor meet together. Stop. Where do they meet? On earth. Earth is that stage that brings the rich and the poor together. Correct? And then read with me again. The Bible says the Lord is the maker of them all. What kind of scripture is this? He never said God made them rich and God made them poor. That stratification happened because the Bible never said God made them so. He made them all. He made them as human beings. They divide themselves into categories. The rich and the poor, they are still in the same earth that God created. Remember, righteousness and justice is the foundation of his throne. Part of this poor is maybe your father, my father. Part of this poor may be you. Not, not, not an insult. It's a description. You can choose to switch and exempt yourself. The rich and the poor. Notice he didn't say the rich Christian. He didn't say the rich anybody and the poor anybody are still on earth. Nobody came from another planet. He says, the Lord is the maker of them all. Go with me to verse 7, same chapter. Now, this is the part I want us to focus on this morning. Read with me, please. The same rich now. Rule it over the poor. And the borrower is servant. The rich prayer warrior will rule over the poor prayer warrior the rich unbeliever will rule under the over the poor fasting giant are we together he never gave them names you fill in the blank the rich anybody will rule over the poor anybody and if you are on the other side of life the borrower you remain slave to the lender this is the mystery of the hardship of believers this is the, the mystery behind people rising in influence. Or that stops the resisting people from rising in influence. That there is a system of dominion that is not governmental, is financial. Are we together now? In every society, there are two kinds of governments. There is the political government and there is the economic government where people can be subjugated to anything anything at all you must believe that in this end times god is not just raising apostles and prophets but he's also bringing a body of knowledge to the body of christ that will bring people out of this grip this fearsome grip these financial issues i hate the effect of poverty on the spiritual growth and development of believers it's one of the reasons why i resent poverty pastor because of the distraction the lack of focus that it can create many men of god who love god sincerely have dabbled into a lot of things and manipulated members not because they are bad but because of the reality of bills to pay and the reality they have their children who need to go to school and then they are forced even against their will and conviction to subscribe to spiritual templates that are not accurate it's not enough to tell people don't do this don't do that you must show them the way 
Jesus said, there is a way that leadeth, there is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Are we together? I once stayed somewhere and, you know, it was a place where there were lots of wealthy people around and I was just standing and the lift just came down and I saw some young guys. These guys were looking like ruffians, pastor. They were looking as though the ruffians, but all of them were wearing pure gold, pure gold, not, not imitation jewelry, pure gold gold you could see it and i watched i said now these boys i said this whole thing on them is the prayer request of a church now that names the name of christ and he's saying oh god a conference is coming say our not understanding the system of the kingdom continues to make god look wicked and our children have started as you know this our children are an enlightened generation like pastor was sharing in abel kuta you can warn your our parents then could warn us and say don't ask questions you just believe by faith these children now don't do anything by faith you have to explain daddy why couldn't we eat meat on monday and he said look i will slap you and the next thing that young boy is on facebook my daddy wants to slap me because there is no meat in this house for your information my daddy is a pastor you know him pastor abc a generation that requires an explanation enough of this frowning when we see our colleagues on tv ah this wicked cheat no no if you didn't make it just admit that it didn't work and trust god for grace this anger and resentment over people's cars people's houses everyone no 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 especially when you see young people that god has helped People carry this resentment. They must be 419 somewhere. And some persons believe, especially for we men of God, they just believe, what are you doing? You are just talking and you are just prospering. You, you have to be there. You should come and arrest you. You, you, see, you see how unfair people's lack of understanding can be? There is a conspiracy against every one of you seated here, including myself. And let me tell you this. The only way to stop it is to exempt yourself first. He said, as for me and my house, it's a choice I've made. I can't choose for you. You may be interested, but as for me and my house, we will not only serve the Lord, wealth and riches according to scripture will be in our house and our righteousness will still endure. Are we together? Is God speaking to us? Now let's go a little further. There are two keys. Let me begin to establish this now. Are we blessed already? There are two keys that we need to understand. Broadly speaking, there's a lot I'll talk about wherever I stop. God will grant us grace. Nobody in the kingdom, listen, the system, the system of the kingdom is different from the system of the world. You have to understand that. That although we are in the world, we are not of the world. Help me, house of David, say in the world but not of the world. One more time, say in the world, but not of the world. There is a way the world becomes wealthy. There is a way people rise. They hustle, they kill, they bribe, they cheat, they destroy their Christian integrity. They do all that it takes. It's a matter of life and death. In the kingdom, it ought not to be so. There is a system. Are we together now? The word of God has come to enlighten us, to help us understand God's way you never prosper in the kingdom without knowing why God blesses write this down the first thing that we have to deal with this morning is why does God bless in the kingdom and 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 I say this with all due respect this is where I have a little problem with my brothers and sisters around the world that teach on wealth and prosperity I think this is where we have missed it you will raise a carnal, a gullible, and an almost godless congregation if all you teach people is just to make money without helping them understand why God blesses in the kingdom. The reason why gives value to everything we are talking about. Are we together now? 
so you see people do a lot of funny things a car just passes people go and lie down on it and claim and do this and people tell a lot of lie a young man who has just hundred thousand home and abroad will buy a suit of seventy thousand and bring to church and say the word is working you see we have to be careful that is not the kingdom's way of doing things is a mistake we must understand why God blesses write this down please three reasons why God blesses us in the kingdom number one God blesses us to enable us live a comfortable life God blesses us in the kingdom to enable us live a comfortable life it is the will of God that we be comfortable as we serve him that's why sacrifice is an exceptional thing because you were not designed that way are we together many of us are so used to suffering it is not in the scope of our experience that God wants to make life comfortable it is the will of God for us to be comfortable whilst we serve him number two and this is the major reason why God blesses us in the kingdom for the purpose of financing God's agenda please write it down kingdom advance financing God's agenda is one of the major reasons why God blesses us the reason why he gave them the gold of Egypt was so that they could build a tabernacle in the wilderness when it was time for the tabernacle God made a clarion call all of you bring the gold that gold that you brought from Egypt was for the purpose of building the temple kingdom financing did you know let me tell you something believers and i say this with all love and honor to the body of christ did you know it's a shame to have to coerce believers to bring financial resources for kingdom advance it's a shame it should be part of your spiritual growth process the way you learn to fast the way you learn to pray the way you learn to study the word right in islam i come from the north in islam a little child is indoctrinated into growing up to understand that kingdom advance is a necessary responsibility that your afterlife even depends on so you will see a hardened smoker somewhere but he knows that something from him should go to the kingdom right now you have to coerce and sometimes people are pressured to even have to tell lies no believers we must be mature to understand that the purpose of rights kingdom rights is for responsibilities you know your rights but you must know your responsibility are we together now and then number three the third reason why God blesses us in the kingdom is to give us an opportunity to reveal the love of God to a dying world God gives us an opportunity through the instrumentation of wealth and prosperity to reveal the love of God to a depraved and a dying world think of how many people's school fees you can pay with the blessing of the Lord upon your life think of how many people you can house think of how many lives you can change it's amazing to know that in this country there are people that sleep without eating are we together now while there's excess in your kitchen there's someone hoping and praying that you would find something anywhere we are the light of the world the bible says not just the light of the church we are a city that is set on a hill that cannot be hidden when you get to a particular level of influence as an individual and as a church the community must begin to partake of the grace of christ revealed and that without prejudices that without any kind of religious consideration all and sundry everybody that lives within your environment must be able to see a reflection of christ through you and the greatest way to do that is to come in with resources with love from jesus i'm a muslim yes with love from jesus i'm a drug addict yes with love from jesus where is he in heaven but he sent an ambassador and we're empowered to reveal his love is god speaking to us This is the reason why God blesses us in the kingdom. If you know why and you are ready to subscribe to the why, then you are ready to experience God's dimension of wealth and abundance. Pastor, there are many people who have tasted of the blessings of God, but they have disappointed the kingdom because they believe that all there is to money is just buying cars and houses and living a luxurious life. That is important. But then they have ignored the kingdom. Are we together they have ignored the kingdom 
imagine it is my prayer that a few people will rise from this church and override one year's financial bill of this church and be quiet it's not an issue do we talk about it no 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 let the lord be praised how would you feel that you sit down and look at your dear father and mother and they say i failed in life i didn't have the opportunity to go to school but you say mama let me give you an opportunity to live in a house of your own before you go to be with the lord if you failed in life your assignment was to give birth to me and so you fulfill destiny let me take over from there are you getting what i'm saying yes i say it with all humility my parents are alive fortunately for me they are old they are alone at home i take care of them it's part of the reasons why they are alive their job is to join all the priests and the people that speak over my life to pray for me I've, you've heard me say it if my mother coughs i will buy her a pharmacy not a drug her assignment was to give birth to me some of us have caused pain for our parents they labored struggled over you and now you have joined them in the pain and you are even asking mama please i saw you hiding one thirty thousand. can you help me I will, I will give you one day and they go to their graves sad and then we hold a memorial you see maybe this message is not for everybody but i know there's someone seated while you are listening to me god is saying look you have gotten the area of the anointing by the grace of God, you are born again. But this is the missing link to your destiny. The gate of your destiny is ready to be opened, but you are not yet prepared to get there. Why does God bless us? To live a comfortable life, to advance the kingdom. Do you know it's a shame that many spiritual things are happening around and your resources is not part of it? pastor did something that broke my heart and humbled me in a way that i don't think i've even recovered from we were talking with him while we were going to abelkota and he spoke to me about su and the foundation you know it's easy now we have revelation and all this and sometimes we ignore these precious people but remember they may not have opened you to the dimension of the realms of revelation and the holy spirit but they gave you a background for morality most of us who came from the background of SU, FCS, and the rest, although we have received the Spirit, although we have all of this, there are some things by God's grace that can never happen. They created the jurisdiction of balance and moral stability, and they deserve to be honored. That's what your pastor did. Your pastor showed what to do with prosperity in Abel Kuta. I was so touched when your pastor took that award. Yes! He deserves a round of applause. He really does. <laughs> Hallelujah. When I watch your pastor call a representative of the SU and an elderly man just came up and your pastor took out time to honor him and say everything and present an award and pledge a commitment to SU. I said, this is it. The kingdom. This is thy kingdom come. This is thy will be done more bibles will be sent more souls will be. Do, do you know that living is useless when your life is not part of what god is doing why then are you alive just to marry just to have children no sir life is more than that life is more than what to eat now if i die today let it be that i did not finish my assignment but not that whilst i was alive the kingdom suffered not under my watch my life and all it takes will advance the kingdom this is what we are teaching this morning if you're with me say amen. amen number two how does god bless now this is where we are going to focus can we pray in tongues again for one or two minutes just to receive what has come into your spirit mm. god is doing a miracle in our lives now he's brooding over every darkness you are causing lights to shine from darkness you are brooding, you are brooding yeah. over every darkness you are causing Please pray. You are praying on behalf of your children, born and unborn. You are brooding over every darkness. 
Hallelujah. Psalm 82 and verse 5. I want to teach you how God prospers. I don't mean to insult your professional knowledge. I don't mean to insult your professional qualification. I know that there are many of us here who are experts in the area of finance and, and all of that. A number of us have been professionally trained. But I, I just want you to work with me as I show you this thing. Let me tell you this. I believe in knowledge. I invest in knowledge. Are we together? Yes. I'm a graduate of a business school. But trust me, if you follow the way of the Lord, your life will surprise you in a way and a manner you will look and say my god what is this if it is the lord's doing it must be marvelous marvelous it says they know not this is where the problem is brothers and sisters not they have not they know not neither will they understand then it says they walk on in darkness and all the foundations of the earth are out of course they know not I began to study this by myself. I have studied the largest churches in every continent. I have studied some of the wealthiest people around the earth, both in the kingdom and outside the kingdom. I have studied very carefully because part of the apostolic responsibility is to create balance within your assigned territory to make sure that people not only the apostolic ministry is concerned not just with preaching but kingdom governance. It is your responsibility to find out that the precepts of God are located for a generation are communicated adequately. And when you see any lapse is within the office of the apostolic ministry to introduce that dimension to say you have done well in this area but you are missing it here let there be balance so that the bride of christ will now be complete equal in length equal in height so miracles are working in your life you are loving the lord but you are also having something to eat to feed your family and to be a blessing then automatically you will find out that healing services will reduce because all the stress and all the things that interrupt our hearts that a day can come, I will come to your house. And instead of finding you looking around and saying, what contract? I just hear a worship song all around. I say, what is going on? Your wife is on the floor. Your children, young and old, rolling. And I say, what is happening? He said, today is a day of, we are just worshiping the Lord to receive the blueprint for the next season. I say, are you a man of God? No, we are kingdom advancers. And I, I see you worshiping with a list of the names of ministries and men of God and foundations. You say these are the ministries to sponsor for the next level because you have understood the systems of the kingdom. Let me see the devil that cut short your life under that kind of atmosphere. I plan to live long, but I plan to live happy. You can live long and live frustrated and kill yourself. Are we together? How does God bless us in this kingdom? Do I have a few minutes to teach this? Okay, I'm seeing the clock. Please listen. This is why you came to church this morning. Pastor, a church is a place not just where people shout amen, but where their minds are adjusted. Gone are the days where you come and teach. You are intelligent people here. Are we together now? Yes, many people think the church is a place where a man of God takes advantage of the ignorance of people and manipulates them. That may happen in other places, but not House of David. You should step out from church and it should be equivalent to going somewhere paying millions in a business seminar but a pastor who is not only a lover of God but a man of vision brought truth to you that can translate to the increase in your companies, in your businesses in your career and you love God. The next time you come to meet parents are happy the only person who should be angry is Satan not your children, not you not your wife Now listen carefully. There are spiritual laws. I'm going to teach you this now. There are spiritual laws that control wealth and abundance. And there are natural laws that control wealth and abundance. Can I teach you this? 
the realm of the spirit, listen carefully according to James chapter 2 verse 26, that a body without a spirit is dead. For many of us, our focus is, oh, I read this, I read business as mean, I have one grace. No, no, no. The realm of the spirit controls the physical. And if all is not done well in the realm of the spirit, no matter what is done in the physical, it is totally useless. So will you follow me as I show you the laws? Write this down. The first, the spiritual laws and natural laws are all called kingdom laws of wealth and prosperity. This is the problem between men of God and business people, pastor. Men of God come with spiritual laws. Business people come with natural laws and two of them fight themselves. There are only two sides of the same coin. The spiritual laws and the natural laws together make the kingdom laws of wealth and abundance are we blessed now so a pastor can teach you on other things like i'll be sharing and tell you don't mind that businessman just talking rubbish leave him alone you just do what i'm telling you and you find out that whoever does what the only person that prospers from that message is the man of god if you are not in ministry there's no provision to prosper from that kind of message and then the business person they forget about these lazy men of god who are not doing anything and is teaching you something and you are laboring the labor of the fool where yet every one of them this morning i want to bring you balance like the hands of samson is always twofold are we together kingdom laws the spiritual laws let's start with the spiritual laws i will run through it i may not have time to give us all the details but i'll just run through it for our understanding and then at the end of it i'll speak over your life will that be fine for this morning service the first kingdom law or the first spiritual law now for wealth and abundance is not tithing now listen carefully <laughs> this is the mistake that many wonderful men and women of God have made. Tithing is a foundational law. Don't mind all those things going around in the internet. Tithing is a foundational law. But let me tell you, the first spiritual law for wealth and abundance has nothing to do with money. It is the law of total surrender. Write it down. The first spiritual law that controls wealth and abundance in the kingdom has to do with your life, not your money my son give me your heart not your money is the mistake we make and many times even as men of god we make that mistake because we need the money but the truth is that total surrender is the first key second corinthians please second corinthians chapter 8 i'll read from verse 1 to 5 second corinthians chapter 8 moreover brethren paul is writing we do you wit of the grace of god bestowed upon the churches of macedonia we are reading to verse 5. How that in a great trial of affliction and the abundance of their joy and in their deep poverty abounded unto the riches of their liberality. Verse 3. For to their power I bear record. Yea, and beyond their power they were willing of themselves. Uh huh. Praying us with much entreaty that we should receive the gift. So he's talking about a church that was benevolent towards the apostles. And take upon us the fellowship of ministering to the saints. Verse 5. Read with me please. And this they did not as we hoped. But first gave their own selves to the Lord. And unto us by the will of God. When your heart is not with God. Money can destroy you. Brothers and sisters respect money. Don't serve it but respect it. There is a lot of dishonor for money in our generation men of god business people and anything you do not honor will leave you you dishonor will leave you are we together there is a spirit that controls money if god does not capture your heart like e daniel sang you have captured my heart you know many people say, what is there with one million what is there money he said you are joking you know, all this this it is poverty talk that makes people to sound that proud respect money if you see an alert of so 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 amount now you will be surprised you will be afraid of the money by yourself money made people do stupid things in the bible hedonistic kings who left god because of the abundance that came solomon being the chiefest of them Solomon was a man who saw the manifested presence of God twice in his life. But money derailed him. He married women all around. And in the depravity of his heart, this was his conclusion. 
that everything my eyes saw, I got it. And he said, vanity upon vanity, all is vanity. Are we together now? So don't, don't sit down and just say, ah, what is there? What is estate? What is the house? No, there is something there. You may not know it now, but there is. So God says, before that journey, let me capture your heart so that you can come out of that Jeep and say, glory be to God. And he says, son, I want it. And he said, let it go. Like Isaac, let it go. Before, because before his arrival, my heart was still with you. Many believers are money mongers. Many pastors, sadly speaking, we love money, this obsession, that's why we lie, that's why we don't do godly things because of some of you as you are looking at me now, I love you, I hope you know that, but some of you can kill because you are looking at me like this, your 1000 got missing, even your wife till now, you are in trouble, I've, I've, the other day that's how, how bad. I will never, never worship money. I will never serve money. Can you make that commitment this morning in your life? And say, Father, no matter how much money comes to me, my heart belongs to you. You have captured my heart. Consume my heart with your love. It's a revelation that you must have deep within your spirit. You have captured my heart, consumed my heart with your love. Just sing it two more times, House of David. It's, it's a covenant of surrender. You have captured my heart, consumed my heart with your love. For the last time, from the depth of your heart, you have captured my heart, consumed my heart with your love. There are people who never go to church again when they get certain jobs, Pastor. I'm busy, I'm busy. You used to have a phone that you have to bend it to see. And now you can swipe everything and say, Pastor, please don't call me, I'm, I'm busy. There are contracts, there are deals, and God says nonsense. You see that now? There are men who, when God blesses them, they say, my wife, the other extra room, just to let you know that there's something they taught me. I don't trust anybody again, including you. 12 years with you, she didn't kill you. But now, God opened a door for you. Madam, you'll be sleeping in that room. I don't trust anybody. The only person I trust is myself. There are people who, because money came, they joined wicked and devilish clubs and groups that have no kingdom bearing. There are people, the moment they paid them arrears of salary, they married another wife, they did a lot of other things. Are we together now? Your heart must be captured by him for wealth to profit you. I say it again. Your heart must be captured by God for wealth to profit you. Any kind of money that will take you to hell is not needed in your life. Brothers and sisters, please hear me. Any kind of money that will make you compromise on your Christian integrity, degrade your morality, degrade your sense of love and honor for people. There are people who treat men like animals. Just because you have a Jeep, one estate, some million somewhere, some properties here and there, and they treat people like rags. No. If it is God's way, that love dimension must remain. The higher you rise, the more you see his mercy and compassion in your life. And you know that this is a product of his grace. The wealthiest people in the world are so compassionate. Don't mind all the middle class, those millionaires that are very lousy and don't. The, the wealth, the billionaires, study billionaires. Many millionaires are not good models. Study billionaires. They have learned, they have, all the point has been proven. There's nothing to prove again. They can walk up to a guard man and say, good morning, sir. And that's, that's one of the wealthiest men in the world. But he sees all, all these people with one, 10 million, 100 million, harass everybody around. You see them in a restaurant, someone's child. I've been waiting here. Why are you not? I can fire you. I can buy this. No. When you fear God, you may, what, what, what may be happening to that waiter? Maybe there's a problem with his child. Maybe there, and you remember, I'm an ambassador. Come, sir, what is wrong? And he says, sir, sorry, they've warned us not to discuss. Say, no, 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 talk to me. Sir, 
30,000 is why you see me depressed like this. He said, for what? Say, my child, they just drove him from school and he's about to write Waek. He said, no, Jesus may not be here, but they are ambassadors. Leave that meal you are ordering first. Let your child go back to school. He said, sir, what is, what is the catch there? He said, which catch? Please go. The lady is already looking at you and her friend. I said, sorry, sir, I'm a Christian. He said, I'm a Christian too. What was in your mind? I'm a, I'm a believer. I'm a Christian. And she tells you, you are the first man of God or first person I'm seeing that is blessing me just like that. You say, just to let you know there is a remnant. Don't generalize corruption. There is a remnant. There are people who have not bowed to Baal. They love the Lord. Total surrender. Total surrender. I have watched financial resources rubbish people, Pastor. I have seen people whose their sanity, their minds became depraved. I've seen ladies who had the privilege of getting married to wealthy people and within two years their lives were shredded into pieces. Father, you have my heart. You have my heart. May no level of lifting, it's a prayer I'm praying for myself in the presence of all of you. May no level of lifting ever take your place in my life. May no level of, of rising ever take your place in my life. If you can pray that prayer this morning a minute from the depth of your heart, I promise you, you are ready to step into a level of abundance that is beyond what you have thought. Are we together? Number two, let's hurry up. The second spiritual law that governs wealth and abundance is tithing. Malachi chapter 3. Most preachers begin to read from verse 10. That's why we don't get the context. Give us from verse 7. Malachi chapter 3, please. Uh, let me talk. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not one who likes to create a lot of controversy, but I'm not even on, on social media. But I heard about all the debates that happen here and there. There's no point arguing. Listen, there are times that you don't have to be under pressure to prove a point. No man can do anything against the truth, but for the truth. If you call me a woman now and I start crying, am I okay? <laughs> are we together? I've lived enough with myself to know that I'm not a woman. So my crying is a sign that I'm not sure of something. He said, but I know whom I have believed and I am persuaded. Verse 7, even from the days of your father, ye are gone away from my ordinances. So it's an ordinance established. It's a system of operation in the kingdom. It says, and have not kept them. Return to me, the Lord is speaking, and I will return to you, saith the Lord of hosts. But you said, wherein shall we return? Next verse, please. Will a man rob God? So he's speaking in the context of this. Will a man rob God? Yet ye have robbed me, but ye say, wherein have we robbed thee? In tithes and offering. Who is speaking here? God. Not the creator of social media. In tithes and offering. Verse 9. It says you are cursed with a curse. Brothers and sisters, let me tell you something you do not know. This is not the cause of the law. Hmm. Are we together now? Yes. This is not the cause of the law. This is a violation of God's ordinance, a violation of his order, and the consequences that come. It says, ye are cursed with a curse, for ye have robbed me, even this whole nation. Verse 10, it tells you the remedy, how to exempt yourself from that war. It says, bring ye how many? All. It tells you the location to bring it into the storehouse, that there may be meat. So it didn't lie to you about what will be done with the money. Many people say, ah, they are using our money to be... Well, I mean, it's in the Bible. He told you what will happen when, the, when the, it gets to the storehouse. He says, and prove me now. Are we together? Say yet, here with, said the Lord of hosts, if I will not open unto you. There is a dimension of open heavens that only comes with tithing. Tithing has nothing to do with money. Is the law of open heavens so that anything done under that open heavens will prosper when Elijah shut the heavens through prayer we saw drought on earth people languished in poverty and penury then the Bible says I will pour you out a blessing that there shall not be enough room to receive it 11 we're reading to 12 he says and I will rebuke you won't pray I will rebuke the devourer you know who the devourer is 
The devourer is not a demon. The devourer is a principality. Bible calls Jesus the head of principalities. You don't cast principalities. It's the blood that drives them. It's not the class of demons that say, in my name. <laughs> if the name was all there is, then what is the blood for? He said they overcame them. Who are that them? There is a class of spirits that operate on legal basis. Listen, if I, if I steal in your house, if I'm coming to steal in your house and I hear a sound, I will run because I'm a thief. But if your son collected rent from me, will I run? I say, as far as I'm concerned, I'm a, I'm a part taker. So it, there, is, there is a legality in the realm of the spirit. That's why they don't run regardless of our fasting. You can fast and pray and it's there on legal grounds. There is a spirit behind the economy that makes life miserable for people. He it says it's the devourer. You receive your salary, everybody gets mysteriously sick. You buy a new car just to test it and you hit Mopo. <laughs> it's not a mistake. That is the devourer. Are we together? Yes. There are people whose lives are a circle of tragedy. You can't hold resources for one month. They just tell you that they are calling your son is in the police station A and B and C. Oh, somebody collapsed somewhere. And then when the money finishes, the problems die too. There is a spirit activating it. The Bible says that that devourer shall be rebuked and he, the devourer is a living thing. He shall not destroy the fruit of your ground. He said, neither shall your vine cast her fruit before that time in the field, said the Lord. Verse 12. He says, and all nations influence shall call you blessed influence have you ever been taught that your tithe has something to do with your influence it says all nations shall call you blessed and ye shall be a delightsome land beulah favor delightsome desirable sevenfold prophetic blessings that follow a tither the moment you frown let me tell you what gives life to titan is not the money is your revelation you can squeeze your face and carry uh, a tithe and stand eyeing the pastor looking at what he's wearing and getting angry believing that that's your tithe and God is watching your heart just like Cain was offering this. God saw his heart already. Are we together? No true pastor prospers because of their members. Every pastor prospers because of his obedience. Are we together? Mm. so many people come out where are the titles and they come out and you see the anger God as I'm giving you this thing you know what I would have done with it I endured eating this and that and God is saying what are you saying you must a, a merry heart must be the tray upon which your tithe is kept Lord thank you for the privilege I'm bringing this tithe to report to you that the blessing you sent from heaven arrived safely here is a token here is a token. Hallelujah. I can teach you so much about tithing. Tithing is a spiritual system of circumcision. Pastor, in the book of Joshua, when Joshua was about to fight, are we together now? They were there and they were powerless. And the angel, they needed assistance from heaven to, for victory to come. But there was a resistance. The people were not circumcised. And then the Lord spoke to Joshua, circumcise all the men. And when they circumcised the men, they took out a portion from the men. As soon as they were circumcised, heavenly assistance came. An angel just showed up. I'm here to assist you. The same way you have armies physically, there are armies too in heaven. Your circumcision has called us. And he gave him a strategy. This is what to do. Your tithing creates an assistance from heaven. I think it's a sign of humility. It's proof that you know you are limited on your own. And let me tell you this. Tithing is not a proof of love. Tithing is a command. So when you obey it, it is obedience. It is your giving that is proof of love. Mm. Is God blessing us this morning? Let's go to the third key. 
your giving, the law of seed time and harvest, still under the spiritual laws, the law of seed time and harvest. The Lord spoke to Noah and told him as far as the earth remains, he says seed time and harvest, summer and winter, cold and heat, day and night shall not cease. So God tied prosperity on earth to the law of seed time and harvest. That's why Jesus was speaking and said, consider the birds. They don't sow, they don't reap. Meaning they are breaking a fundamental law I enacted. Yet by the mercy of God, God feeds them. Giving. Giving. Giving is very important in the kingdom. Listen. The Bible calls the giver a sower. Are we together? According to 2 Corinthians chapter 9. The Bible says, he that soweth sparingly, listen very carefully, will reap sparingly. He that soweth bountifully will reap bountifully. Then it says, every man according as he has proposed in his heart, so let him give. So the Bible calls giving sowing. You find that in 2 Corinthians chapter 9 from verse 6. It says, every man as he has purpose in his heart, so let him give cheerfully and not grudgingly, for God loves a cheerful giver. Then the Bible says, and God is able to make all grace abound towards you, so that ye having all sufficiency in all things, he said that you might abound to every good work. Are we together now? Mm. Giving is very important in this kingdom. You don't wish for blessings. You give. But you give out of revelation. Giving is a system of releasing seeds for harvest to come. But let me tell you this. For this service, we're, we're about to pray shortly. There are three kinds of givings I want to teach you. Now, giving has many. This thing I'm teaching you is a, it, it is a series. I've done a series on it. I'm sure our media people uh, will make it available. Financial Dominion and the Wealthy Place and then success systems you can get all of them and they will help you however i found out pastor i've studied givings and i found out that not all givings are the same you see that there are three major givings you must engage in to rise there are other kinds of givings that can happen when you rise there's worship offering their vows and the rest but there are three of them on your journey to greatness these three dimensions of giving number one ready kingdom investments the first dimension of giving that is a bailout system to short lack and poverty in your life is kingdom investment finding a need in the house of god and using your resources to fill that need kingdom investments When you read 1 Kings chapter 3, for time's for time sake, we may not go there. 1 Kings chapter 3, from verse 3 to 14. Solomon did something that touched the heart of God. When you read from verse 3, the Bible says Solomon loved the Lord. Is that true? So the foundation of his giving was love for God. And then the Bible says he offered a thousand burnt offerings. That night, God came to him. Solomon, you have done this. What should I do for you? And then Solomon said, I am young, I'm a young man, and you have given me all these great people. He said, grant unto thy servant an understanding heart, so that I will lead your people. And God himself was surprised. He said, seeing that you did not ask for the life of your enemies and all of that, I will give you an understanding heart. But with it, I will give you riches, wealth, and honor above every other king that has existed and that will ever come. That was granted to Solomon. So the, the, the purpose for your desiring wealth and prosperity, I told you already, a major part of it is kingdom advance. And you must show it when God begins to bring resources. Are we together? Kingdom advance. There are, um, and, and I share this with all humility. I have a list of ministries and men of God that I believe and I, I, when I hear that there is a program and a meeting somewhere, I always want to make sure my seed is speaking. You can start where you are. 100 Naira recharge card. Pastor, I may not have so much, but let this be part of this. Feel sad when your seed is not part of something that God is doing. It's a burden that you have for the house of God. In... In 2 Samuel, 
chapter 7. I wish we had time. Just write this down. 2 Samuel chapter 7 and verse 1 and 2. And then 1 Chronicles chapter 22 from verse 7 to 19. The Bible gives us a story of David. The Bible tells us something very interesting. That David was in his position of rest. God had given him rest round about and he began to bother him. That how can I be seated like this? The Bible says God had given him rest round about from all his enemies. And he, he came to Nathan the prophet and he said, look, um, how can I be sitting in this palace while the tabernacle, the ark of God is somewhere behind curtain somewhere? No, I can't sit. I, I have to get up and do something for the house of God. And when the report got to God, God said, no, you've shed too much blood. Don't worry. And you would think David would be hurt. David began to gather the materials for his son Solomon and says Solomon um, I know that I may not have the privilege of building the house of God but let me gather the materials for you make sure you walk in the ways of the Lord and build the house and the Bible tells us that that was well pleasing to God when was the last time without coercion you had a burden for the house of the Lord and that included your seed I'm challenging you house of David pastor is not even aware that I'm supposed to preach this message and so this is by the spirit to you. I can show you why you are at that level financially. Remember the Bible declares in Ecclesiastes chapter 11 and verse 3 that if the cloud be full of rain, it is your responsibility to create that vapor. The same way we have a water cycle. Rain does not come just like that. There must be evaporation. Are we together now? And there are regions... There are regions down north, extreme north, there are desert regions and the humidity there is so low, sometimes they would barely have rain in a year. So your giving is like sending that vapor. If you use a spoon, that's how long it will take before your rain comes. Are we together now? Don't you say the size of your seed does not matter. You are programming a climate of rain. It says only if the cloud be full of rain. Some of us have been using one teaspoon per year. Just when you are 61, that's when the rain will come. At that level you are going. But there are others who can challenge God in one month. Something happens and rain comes. So you're giving kingdom investments. Number two, prophet offering. Let me teach you this. I'm sure your pastor will be so uncomfortable as I'm teaching this, but I'm glad I'm the one doing it. Let me teach you something. There is a relationship between the anointing of your man of God and your prosperity. It's not indoctrination. Forget about the imbalances here and there, but I want to teach you this because it's truth. There is a relationship between the anointing that is upon your pastor and your prosperity. Like I thought, nobody lifts himself in this kingdom. You must be lifted. When it was time for Isaac to bless his sons, he told his son, he said, go and make me venison. Why? That my soul be gladdened to the, to the end that I will bless you. When they were going to see prophet Samuel, Saul, the son of Kish, they asked the servant, do we have a gift to go and meet the man of God? It was a law and a custom that you never went to a man of God empty-handed. And that's not by manipulation. It was a revelation of value that something that left you to him could bring you to his dimension of reality. Are we together? Hebrews chapter 7 and verse 7 says, And without all contradiction, it says the less is blessed of the greater. It's true. There are dimensions that God has brought your dear pastor and his wife that many of us desire. You can, through the law of honor, tap into that grace. Never become part of a church where you do not communicate as, rev as a revelation to your pastor. Listen, you, when you bless a blessed man, you are not helping him. You are creating a platform to rise. The queen of Sheba knew this. When she came and saw Solomon, ah, ah, the Bible says that Solomon gave her gifts. So, but she said, Solomon, thank you for your gift. This is my own because I need to rise. Are we together? So imagine that we are giving to the king of all the earth, Jesus. He lifts you to his dimension through your seed. Because Jesus is a man. The man, Jesus, seated at the right hand. Are we together now? Yes. When you are rising in the kingdom, you don't, you don't focus on giving to the poor. Charity is when God has helped you. Hello? 
Listen, this is the balance. Don't let some of these secular organizations fool you. Many of us keep giving to the poor. What happens when you give to the poor is that God will hear you in the day of trouble. There are blessings allocated for giving to the poor. Rising is not tied to giving to the poor. He said the poor you will always have with you. When you want to rise, you sow into an anointing higher than you to take you to that level first. When you are established, you can now help. It's a big mistake. Some of you are making it now. Are, we, are you getting what I'm saying now? The poor and the needy are there. I'm not saying don't help them. But some of these funny things people do around, you rise first. You never give to the poor and rise. No, sir. You sow into an anointing that can bring you into that level of reality. Then you now create structures that give and bless people. Is God speaking to us? Mm. 20, 2007, I was in Port Harcourt. I remember I attended a Christ Embassy convention. It was um, Evangelist Eddie Owase. And, you know, it was a two days conference. And I was there and they challenged people to sow. I didn't have anything, Pastor. Just my uh, bag. Bag that they sowed as a seed. My recharge, my rechargeable and all of that. I, I, I was so stirred up by that message. I got up around 3 o'clock and I prayed in tongues for 3 hours. Non-stop. I said I was tired of this. Lord, you have to do something about my life. I carried all my clothes and everything including my rechargeable. I just dropped it there and zipped the bag. I was dragging that bag like a madman. I went late and there was an overflow outside, so I sat down there. When it was time for people to sow, people went and sowed. Others were giving cars, houses. I just stood there and the Holy Spirit told me to remain. Can you imagine this kind of embarrassment? Immediately, everyone finished giving. The Lord said, you can go. Imagine if that you were coming with something substantial. You are dragging a bag that... Is obviously going, you know, to the inner cities and all of that. And all of a sudden, I was passing. People were looking at me. Some were laughing, but that was my Isaac. I was tired of where I was. I needed my clouds to be full of rain. I dragged that back to the altar. People were looking. People were laughing. Don't forget, I'm a young man. 20, 2007. Imagine. I was dragging. People were looking. But sometimes you have to be angry. Too angry. Not to allow people's sarcasm stop you. When I went there and dropped that thing, something left my heart and joined that bag. I knew that I gave my Isaac. I returned back and I sat down and the Holy Ghost spoke to me. He said, from this day you have entered wealth. It's true. Two days or so, if I'm not mistaken, I can't remember the story. 6.10 in the morning, someone called me shaking. Is this Joshua Selman? I said, who are you? He said, that's not the issue. The Lord said I should send you some money. Can you send me your account number? I said, what? What is this? What in the world is happening? And then he made a transfer for me and God connected me to someone and God started helping me. It works. It's because we don't believe it. We do it suspecting it will not work. So it doesn't work. And then it confirms what we suspected. We're going to pray. The last of the spiritual laws is seed faith. Now, let me tell you this. Seed faith is very powerful. In fact, please, can, can, I, can we read Haggai chapter 1? I don't want to just let this pass like that. The Lord is just putting in my heart again. Why many people are poor. Haggai chapter 1. Let me, let's read it from verse 1 um, to 11. It will be very fast. In the second year of Darius, just go to verse 2. Go to verse 2, sir. Thus speaketh the Lord of hosts, saying, Listen, these people say the time is not come, the time that the Lord's house should be built. Verse 3. Then came the word of the Lord by Haggai the prophet, saying, Is it time for you, O ye, to dwell in your cereal houses and the house, my house lie in ways? Verse 5. Now, therefore, thus saith the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. Ye have sown much. Listen, are you seeing? It is in this order. You have sown much and bring little. I just failed to tell you why many of us, although you sow, you don't get anything. There's no guarantee that just because you sow, you must reap. When the house of God is not a priority, even your seeds will not bring the required harvest. 
He said, you have sown much and bring little. Ye eat, but ye have not enough. Ye drink, but ye are not filled with the drink. He said, ye clothe you, but there is none warm. And he that earneth wages, workers, listen, earneth wages to put it into a bag with holes. Seven. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. Verse eight. Go up to the mountain and bring wood and build the house and I will take pleasure in it and I will be glorified, saith the Lord. Verse 9, we are reading to 11. Ye looked for much and lo, it came to little and when ye brought it home, ye did blow upon it. Why? He said, I did blow upon it. Why? Said the Lord of hosts, because of my house that is in waste and ye run every man to his own house. God is saying, although you are sowing, the motive is just to keep enriching yourself. My house is not yet a priority. So your giving has turned to just bribe. You don't get anything from it. Last verse 11. He said, therefore, let's, let's go to 10. Therefore, the heaven over you is stayed from what? Dew. And the earth is stayed from her fruit. Verse 11. And I called for a drought upon the land and upon the mountains and upon the corn and upon the new wine and upon the oil and upon all that which the ground brings forth and upon men and upon cattle and upon the labor of the hands. Imagine a state like this simply because the house of God is not a priority. Let me just share about seed faith. What is seed faith? I know many of you have heard it. Some of you have criticized it. You've insulted men of God and insulted people. There is a system in the kingdom where God can give a seed another body. That means that it is not always that you sow money and reap money. You can sow money and reap a house. God can change what will come and give the seed another body that you can sow in expectation you are tapping into the law of resurrection because every seed dies so it is possible that you wrap your faith around a seed as instructed by god and you release it with faith and expect that god will bring another harvest a man can sow a seed and reap a child after 10 years of barrenness are we together very important the woman broke her alabaster box she didn't get more alabaster boxes she got another kind of harvest please listen brothers and sisters these three dimensions of givings you must practice kingdom investment a seed to your prophet your man of god and then seed faith that you tie expectations Lord, why is the devourer? Why is my job? There's no promotion. Everybody is rising except me. And you carry a seed with faith. And you say, Lord, I'm sowing this seed to open up my doors. You will be surprised. It's what I did in 2007. And I didn't get more boxes. The Lord changed my life in a way. When you do all of this, there are return channels. Number one, favor with men. The first evidence that you have kept the spiritual laws is a strange dimension of favor. Now listen carefully. The natural laws of wealth are responsible for the management and the multiplication of it. But the arrival of wealth comes by engaging the spiritual laws. Are you seeing the balance now? So you can have the resources but then if you ignore the natural laws, which you can listen and I'm sure your pastor has taught you and will teach you again. You can keep having abundance, but you will never enter into the realm of overflow because you ignore the spiritual system allocated for the management and the multiplication of the same. Are we together? But for now, many of us, it's not even there. Talk more of saying you need it to arrive. It is favor with men. Favor with God does not bring money. It is favor with men. You can have favor with God and not have favor with men. Please listen. The moment you are practicing these spiritual laws, you can be in a hole somewhere, the cave of Adullam. Favor will come to you and meet you. What is favor? Men rising to support your cause. Favor is not just about money. The moment men begin to come to you, is a sign that you are doing something in the realm of the spirit. 
if you have money and you don't have men you have money but you don't have favor favor is always shown by the coming of men this morning there are people here who are in desperate need for that favor number two god gives you wisdom pastor wisdom like love is in different dimensions there is the length the height there are two dimensions of wisdom you need for finances one is divine direction the other is divine strategies there are more there are many other dimensions of wisdom but these two are the ones allocated for provision the lord is my shepherd so i shall not want he leads me beside the quiet waters thou shalt hear a voice from behind instead of this hustling what are you doing how are you making money oh yeah let me go and then no he said when i sent you lackest thou anything when i instructed you cast the net to the right side and they did direction and there was a catch it shouldn't have worked but when wisdom came it came with supplies many of us here right now we need that wisdom and you have prayed and prayed and prayed but obedience is better than that sacrifice you are doing you will need to go back to the spiritual laws and begin to engage them and wisdom comes to you and finally the blessing is activated many people i know you have listened to kenneth um, uh, kenneth copeland and learned about the blessing you know what the blessing is the blessing is is the blessing is a dimension of the operation of the spirit that makes you at peace with creation listen very carefully the blessing compels creation to respond to you as though it was responding to jesus it's called the blessing it's a spiritual quality that attracts to your life people opportunities and resources you never fight a blessed man a blessed man is not one who came from a family that is fortunate a blessed man is one who by engaging the spiritual laws of wealth has created a climate you enter into something that should not prosper you and it prospers only you and the next people coming get into trouble a boss is angry oh you you are fired you you are, are you be promoted that's the blessing that's not you there is an anointing I told you that creation has never been disobedient. It only depends on the programming on you. They respond to you based on something that is upon your life. In the same Lagos where you have been trying to help, to say, oh God, somebody help me. Someone may come into Lagos for one week and leave back with millions. Not, not fraudulence or anything, but you are there. All the people who are supposed to bless you have relatives who are in need. If somebody gives you money today, he has a brother somewhere or someone in his family who is in need. It takes the blessing. Pastor, there are many people who are not working in the reality of the blessing. It's obvious because of the kinds of hardship. We labor so much. But this morning, the Lord wants to change our life. It's been a long service, but I want us to pray. It's time for God to shift us to a new dimension. Before you stand up, whilst you are seated, can you just talk to the Lord? Lord, I see where the problem is. I see where the problem is. I just thought it was witchcraft. I just thought it was an oppression somewhere. I just thought I was not fortunate. I just thought it's because I'm not a Yoruba person and I'm in Lagos and, and it's, it's some system of marginalization. It's not true. I just thought it's because I, I wasn't as educated as I ought to know, sir. He told Abel, if you do it correctly, will your sacrifice not be accepted? Lift your voice and pray. Talk to the Lord from the depth of your heart. Lord, I have approached prosperity as a resentful subject that is just left for greedy people. But now I am learning that this is part of the tools for your end time agenda. I correct my understanding about it here at House of David this morning. Begin to pray. I've shared with you all the keys. For some of you, you've done every other thing except absolute surrender. Your heart, your obsession for money is pungent, demonic almost you love god but your obsession for money you can kill for it we sang that god would take our hearts 
there are many of us all you do is business you've gone for seminars wonderful you've you've gotten a job you've educated yourself you've improved on yourself but you have ignored the spiritual laws the weightier systems of the kingdom cry for the mercy and the grace of god upon your life there are many of us who are not givers the spiritual humidity over our lives is so low there is no possibility of rain except by the mercy of God and the Bible says if the cloud be full of rain the cloud be full of rain you have never connected with the grace of any great man not your pastor not any great man God has brought around your life so you remain at the same level for a long time for a long time for a long time praying and fasting but going around the same level 30 years working but the same level I'm going to speak over your life I just want you to pray for many of us we've never seen the necessity of becoming partakers of what God is doing in this church and in the kingdom programs come and go and your seed is not part of it any kingdom activity within your environment your seed is not part of it you are just happy that God is using people and you are benefiting from it but you are learning now that your heavens can be brass and your earth can be iron it's not about what you do it's the spiritual forces that back you up and support what you do it's not that the job cannot come it's not that the promotion cannot come please listen to me some of you will need to go back and teach your loved ones who have been quarreling the lord getting angry with wealthy people insulting and communicating sarcasm over pastors and say i found the key let's take responsibility age does not bring prosperity ellie who said there is a spirit in man it says the inspiration of the almighty can make men of understanding and when you have that understanding then isaiah 60 becomes a reality that you arise and you shine for your light is come and that the glory of the lord is risen upon you you only arise and shine when your light comes I like you in one minute to make a covenant with yourself and God that I will not transfer poverty to my generation. I, I come as a bridge. The Bible says they shall be called the repairers of the bridge. Some of us are coming from families where no one's head has lifted. No one has risen in that family. According to Zechariah chapter 1 and verse 18, the four horns that have been released across the earth, they have judged our families and kept everyone down. No one rises, no influence, no grace, no speed, no accomplishment in life. Lord, I come as a carpenter this morning. Here as house of David, I come as a carpenter, anointed to correct the errors that have been before me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. One last prayer and I speak over your life. Father, the giving grace. Listen, you, you don't give because you want to give. There is a grace that compels men. He said, I have the power to lay it down. The power to lay it down is a grace that must be given to you. Are we together? The power to lay down things at the demand of God is not something you do mechanically. That's why people go back and they get angry. That's why people sow seeds in church and return back and say, Pastor, I wasn't, something was wrong with me that time. Now I'm fine. Give me back my what? No, 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 no. The power to lay it down. I'm yours, I'm yours, I'm yours forever. I'm yours, I'm yours, I'm yours. My life is yours, it's yours, it's yours forever. Here's the part of the song I want you to really sing. Whatever you ask of me, 
I surrender That's the song for those who will rise in this season Whatever you ask of me Whatever you ask of me I surrender My burden is easy and my yoke is light You ask of me Whatever you ask of me I surrender Hallelujah Shall we all rise? Lift up your hands. I've been instructed by the man of God to pray, and that's what I want to do to pray for the congregation. He has spoken words over us. I'm about to speak bad of spirit to everybody. And what I'm being inspired to do right now, just some five seconds ago, all dropped in my spirit the prayer of Joseph. The prayer of Joseph. How Jacob blessed Joseph. I'm about to pronounce the same prayer over everybody. The Bible says, and Jacob called them together. And when he got to Joseph, he looked at him. And I said to you, as a father, by the spirit of God, as a shepherd over the house, under Jesus our Lord. Joseph, and you are Joseph today. He said, and I say in the name of Jesus, Joseph is a fruitful bough. A fruitful bough by the well whose branches leap over the wall. He said the archers have shot at him, they have hated him, but his bow remains strong. Your bows are strong. And the hands of your your strength are made strong by the God of Jacob, the stone and the shepherd of Israel. By the Almighty who helps you and the God who blesses you with the blessings of heaven above. You have the blessings of the heart beneath. You have the blessing of the breast and of the womb. The blessing of your life have exceeded that of your progenitors. Up to the uttermost bounds of the everlasting hills. They are on your head and on the head of you distant from your brethren. This blessing came as a prophetic word from Jacob and is coming from him by the Holy Spirit and it is established in your life. In the name of Jesus. Heaven responds to you. The earth responds to you. You are fruitful. And your fruit lives over the wall. That talks about overflowing. In the name of Jesus. By the reason of this blessing that has come into your life, every cause is removed. In the name of Jesus Christ, you accelerate. You fly. You move with speed and accuracy in the name of Jesus. Upon the mountains of this world, he said, I have set my king, my holy king, upon my holy mountains. Upon the mountains of this world, you are taken to the apex of those mountains. In the name of Jesus Christ, that which was not working before is working for you now. All things are working together for your good. You are favored with God and favored with man. You arise, you are shining. Your light is come. The glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Though darkness may cover the earth or gross darkness the people, but over you as the Lord risen. Gentiles will come to your light. Kings will come to the brightness of your rising. Lift up your hands and see. Your sons are brought from afar. Your daughters are nursed, nursed at thy side. You become rich and your heart is full of joy. The abundance of the sea is converted to you. The wealth of the nation shall come to you. Multitudes of vehicles shall cover your land. They of Sheba, they come, they bring gold. All the floods of Ked and the rams of Nabioth. Oh, he said your gate shall not be shut day and night. I use the word your account shall not be shut day or night. Because men bring their wealth to glorify the name of God in your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Instead of brass, you have gold. For iron, you have silver. For wood, you have brass. For stone, you have iron. A little one, your life is like a thousand. In the name of Jesus Christ. When you think 20, you get 60. 
when you think one million you get 10 billion in the name of jesus grace for acceleration grace for expansion in the name of jesus that is what is upon you this morning oh blessed be the name of the lord i see peace in families where there has been tension the tension is down right now in the name of jesus absolute health nothing missing in your life nothing broken in the name of jesus thank you father wave your hands to him oh we give you praise we give you praise brother daniel i just see now i'm seeing this expansion coming into your music ministry you are being at a level where you bless lives at a level but that which is upon you that the lord has put there is about to go to another level you are being made more visible to the saints on earth yes hallelujah there's a reposition going on right now you are being made visible you know the higher you go the more visible you become god is making you more visible your ministry is spreading in the name of jesus oh so many miracles on monday morning on tuesday wednesday thursday friday glory to god glory to god hallelujah i rejoice with all the single people that are here it's your time to marry and whatsoever was a hindrance before has just been removed glory to god so i rejoice yesterday when you pray for those trusting god for the fruit i was full of joy and i thank god that is established what we cannot deny is that we have been visited you know that thank you for choosing